Hi everyone, my name is Andy Rasman. I will be speaking on the Passover. I'll be speaking about Jewish messianic expectations and Palm Sunday and how Jesus really fulfilled a lot uh, during Passover, fulfilled a lot of uh, messianic expectations that Jews are not recognizing today. Uh, so for the Passover, um, it is a Jewish annual observance of the time when God set his people free from slavery to the Egyptians. Uh, this was done through uh, the Jews needing to sacrifice a lamb and put the blood of the lamb on the door frames of their houses, and anyone in their homes covered with this blood uh, were spared as this angel of death passed over all the homes in Egypt, taking the firstborn male of every home that wasn't covered in this blood. And after uh, all the males uh, of the Egyptians, all the firstborn males of the Egyptians were killed. Uh, Pharaoh said, hey, get out of here. You're done. I'm through a few people. This was the last straw. Um, so because they were set free from slavery to the Egyptians uh, at Passover, Jews began this sort of expectancy of that the Messiah would come to set them free from their oppressors on Passover. So during the first century, under Roman rule, the Jews thought that the Messiah would come and set the Jews free from the Romans, uh, and that they would have their land, their promised land, back again, not under Roman rule and control. So essentially, when people were thinking Jesus was the Messiah, and they were looking forward to what he would do when he came to Jerusalem for the Passover, they were expecting Jesus to be showing up as Rambo Jesus, if he actually was the Messiah. Uh, so Rambo, you know, one man army could take on the whole Viet Cong by himself. Uh, essentially, they thought that this is what Jesus could do, that he could take out all the Romans by himself with his God powers. So how is this evidenced uh, in the biblical text? That this is uh, what they actually would have expected Jesus to have done. Um, a few things here. Uh, they thought the Messiah would be a conquering king. Uh, this is so we don't really get this, but when Jesus came into Jerusalem for the Passover, he rode in on a donkey. Uh, only kings rode into the city on anything, horseback, donkey, anything. So uh, if you were not a king, if you weren't like a governmental ruler, you were supposed to get off whatever you're riding on and walk into the town. So the fact that Jesus rode into the town, people were going, oh, cool, he's claiming himself to be king. We thought he was the Messiah. We thought he was going to be our king. We thought he was going to conquer the Romans and establish this kingdom that would last forever and be great for us with no more enemies. Uh, he's finally stepping into this role that we thought he was supposed to have by actually riding into town. Uh, and their response then was waving of palm branches. Uh, we probably don't really understand what the palm branch stuff was about, but palms were a sign of victory. Uh, so in a way, they were already declaring victory over the Romans before he even laid a finger to kill anyone, and obviously he never did kill anyone. The only person that tried to kill someone was his disciple Peter, who cut off an ear of someone trying to arrest Jesus, and Jesus just healed the guy and put the ear back, which was awesome. Um, so anyway, so they, they declared him to be their king when he rode in, because they, they recognized him to be declaring himself to be king, uh, and they were waving that victory was already theirs through the palm branches. Uh, what is interesting, though, uh, most of us probably don't know this, but uh, Passover was a multi-day affair. Uh, if you read Exodus 12, where the instructions for Passover are given, we see the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household, if any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be your old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Uh, so they pick them on the 10th day of this month, and then slaughter them on the 14th day. So what is awesome here that was going on when they were waving palm branches and declaring Jesus uh, to be their king, to be their Messiah, this was the day that the Jews selected their Passover lamb. So on Palm Sunday, when they declared Jesus to be their king, 
and they were expecting him to kick out the Romans to be Rambo Jesus, they unknowingly were picking their Passover lamb. And what I find awesome is what Jesus always did every day. It records that he went to the temple. So he's in the house of God each day, just as Scripture says, keep this lamb in your house with your family. Uh, Jesus was there with God's people day in, day out, and then they crucified him um, as their Passover lamb. So he was the Passover lamb that they selected, and they crucified their Passover lamb. Um, And what is beautiful here then is that we are set free from slavery, uh, but it's not a slavery uh, which is of the oppression of a government. Uh, This is our slavery to sin. He set us free from slavery to sin. And uh, if you have faith in Christ, the blood of Christ, your Passover lamb, covers you. And judgment, the wrath of God, passes over us because we are forgiven in Christ Jesus. Um, I just think this is great stuff. This is great news. Um, As John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of your world. This is one way of numerous ways that the Jewish festivals point to Jesus. Um, And Passover is just one of those great examples where Jesus um, clearly is our Passover Lamb and that his blood does cover us and forgives us of all our sins. That is very, very good news. Um, and hopefully if you go to a church that celebrates Palm Sunday uh, with the waving of palms, you can think about that. The people were declaring victory. Uh, for us, when we wave palms, we can declare victory too. For us, we know we have a victory over sin, death, and the devil because Jesus is our Christ. Jesus is our Messiah. And he's not concerned about lines on a map. He's not concerned about a physical kingdom. He's concerned about a spiritual kingdom, an eternal kingdom, a kingdom which is not of this world. Um, Hopefully you found this to be encouraging to you. Hopefully you found it to be something that will make you want to dig into Scripture and to read more of Scripture, all of which points to and testifies about Jesus as he himself said. All right, so please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, Check out a little link there, which is a YouTube suggestion for another one of my videos that you may like. YouTube's really smart, and they figure out what you normally like to watch. They'll select one of my videos that they think you'll like to watch. And also check out my website, contradictmovement.com. Org. God bless you all. Peace. And that, that, that peace comes from Christ.